Working in a microfluidic environment usually requires the use of various fittings and microfluidic tubing. Tubing enables one to link the various elements of your microfluidic circuit, while the fittings ensure to seal the fluidic path and avoid any leakage or inner movement. In this video, we will look at those different elements, understand their role, and how to choose wisely the relevant kit regarding one's requirements. Tubing Several parameters must be taken into consideration in order to choose the tubing. Its dimensions, the overall pressure to be applied inside, and the tubing material. When selecting your tubing, you should become familiar with the tubing dimension's influence. OD it means outer diameter. ID it means inner diameter, diameter of the fluidic path where fluid flows. The inner diameter plays a significant role in the resistivity brought by the tubing. The smaller it is, the more resistant the tubing will be. L means length. Usually the tubing is made as short as possible to have smaller internal volumes, the internal volume of the tubing being the intersection times the length of the tubing. It is also a parameter that takes part in the resistivity of the tubing. In many catalogs, tubing dimensions can be displayed in inches, millimeters, and mixture of the two. The following chart will help conversion between these two systems. Pressure amount will also define which tubing fits the best in experiment, especially regarding tubing inner diameter. Standard sizes of tubing which are 1 32nd inch or 1 16th inch are respectively meant for high pressure based flow and low pressure based flow. A wide range of materials are available for the same ID slash OD combination. Be careful to check the chemical and biological compatibilities of the tubing material before installing the tubing on your application. Some of the most common materials for microfluidic tubing include Peak, PTFE, FEP, ETFE, or fused silica. Each of them has a different level of biocompatibility and of chemical compatibility regarding the fluids and chemicals driven inside. Having identified the proper tubing type and size to use, let's see how to adapt this tubing and connect it to the different elements. Fittings The two major components in a fitting system are the nut and the ferrule. The nut is responsible for providing the driving force resulting in the ferrule to seal. Fitting optimal sealing aims for two purposes. First, to avoid leakage at the junction. Second, to maintain perfectly the tubing and prevent any movement, especially facing the opposing pressure in the flow back. By screwing the nut's thread, the ferrule will add pat to the output and provide that perfect match. It exists a wide variety of fittings. They can be either a single part, or divided into two parts, the nut and the ferrule. Main differences will occur in the overall dimensions of the nut and ferrule. In the material, the inner diameter hosting the tubing, or the head geometry. In addition to fitting, a sleeve can also be required for connecting 132nd OD tubing to standard 10 to 32 cone port, normally meant for 116th OD. Fluigent wisely selects the tubing and fittings required for the use of the instruments and gather them in ready-to-use kits.